guys. Today we're going to do a simple project in uh, easel using the uh, the new mandrel from your home. Um, it's very basic, very easy. We'll get you started cutting, kind of have a basic understanding of easel, how it works, and um, how to do some carving. So we're going to make a simple fence today. Uh, basically what this is, is it is a um, piece of wood that I mount to the side of my bed. And then any material that I put in my bed, I just slap up against the wood and I know my Y axis is straight. And then I just have to clamp it or whatever. I'm a big fan. I'm a cheerleader of having fences. I actually have fences on the side and the bottom of um, most of my machines. And the bottom obviously is removable so that you could do your longer piece. And this is especially good if you're going to do a longer piece than what your bed can allow because it will always keep your Y straight. So anyway, well, let's get started. Um, as you can see here, I have these, they're called T-nuts and they have little uh, groove things on them here. Let's see if that's going to focus for you. Yeah. And uh, these are going to go on the bottom and then we're going to put washers on the top. And then we're going to put little screws to go through and um, use these T-slot nuts to go in the uh, in the bed and hold it in place. So we're going to draw holes through, recess. We're going to flip it over. I'm going to show you how to line that up. And that's it. Okay, so if you've got your mandrel together, um, you could do the same thing for the silverback. Um, it's pretty much this baby here is pretty much just a mini silverback. So this whole concepts going to be um actually for both machines um if you so choose so but anyway this is the mandrel so um if you've got it all set up and everything's working perfectly fine then you could probably skip to the part where i actually start the design but if you did not and if you did not connect your probe and configure your probe then let's just do that real quick so um on my screen what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and delete the machine i have we're going to add another one change the settings and then go forward. So I'm um, going to machine, edit your machine, <coughs> edit your machine, uninstall this machine. Yes. Let me make this a little smaller for a minute here. So then now we're going to go machine, set up new machine. We're going to choose other, um, other manufacturer is your home. Now the model, we don't have the, um, the mandrel in the inventables or the easel yet um, where we have to do a couple things first and where to get it in there. But in the meantime, you can go ahead and just choose your back, your home, the silver back. The only real difference is the, um, the carved settings. And uh, of course we're going to change those. We're not going to use the default. We're going to change it. We're going to do the manual settings. So um, that would be okay. And from here, I'm going to click confirm settings. <clears throat> it's going to connect. Now you're going to want to do up, down. If you already have your setup, and this is probably fine, but you're going to want to do up, down. Let me move this camera out of the way here. Um, you're going to do up, down, make sure everything works. Left, right, my, down. Mine's all good. If they did not, you would say yes or no. Very simple. Get that straight. Click continue. Um, yes, we have homing enabled. <clears throat> Let's move this out of the way. We're going to tell it to home it. Very easy process. Yours should be humming just like this. <clears throat> if it does not, you'll have to um, stop here and do some other troubleshooting. But um, um, yes, we do have a probe. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera on for you so you can see this. Um, we're going to say yes. Oh, sorry. We are going to say yes, I do have a probe. And then what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to take the clip. Put the clip on a bit. Um, I put my, um, I have an eighth inch end mill that I'm going to be using today. If you have an eighth inch end mill, which you should, 
um, go ahead and put it into the machine and then put your clip on there, put your Z probe down here. Um, it's right on the edge, so be careful. Um, then when it says a uh, clip is attached, then we're going to just touch it on there and make sure that it lights up. It's super important that you see it say contact. That's really, really important because if it does not, then um, it's going to just jam into the bed. So you don't want that at all. Uh, next, we're going to click advanced settings. This is really important. So we're going to be in millimeters. And what you're going to want to do, which you don't have to do, I can do it for you right now, is um, measure the thickness of your um, Z probe plate. Mine is 20.3. And you want it within 0.1 millimeter, the best you can. So I'm going to say 20.3. That's the thickness of, should be yours as well. So you're going to want to put up here 20.3 and hit tab and it should change it to mm. The probe rate is fine. Um, that is how fast it goes down. That's fine. The retract height is how far up it's going to come after it finds the home position and then the maximum probe and distance is how far it's going to move down before it finally gives up if it doesn't find it so that's why whenever we do probing we want to move this down a little bit before it um you want to before you do the probing so we're going to leave those as they are and then we're going to click continue and then we're not going to run a test ca card we're just going to click finish Go ahead and create a new project and we should be good. So one of the things we want to do first is now we need to set up the machine the rest of the way in easel. So let's go up to machine. We're going to go edit your machine. Uh, my controller is by hardware because I have this spindle that came with it. Um, the uh, It's not a Makita. It is a 24 volt DC. And the spindle is 14,000, which is fine. Accessories, you should say Z probe. Your work area is, um, I believe it is 11. Let me get a ruler. I'm going to say that correctly. I'm going to measure the bed here. So we got 14 and an eighth by, whoops, 14 and an eighth by 13 and three quarters. So I'm going to go the, Y is 14.125, I'm sorry, the Y is 14.125, and the X, I said was what, 13 and 3 quarters? 13 and 3 quarters, 13.75. So that's the dimensions of our bed. So our Y is 14, and the X is 13.75. So that's what you want to have. You want to make sure you have it on hardware, 24 volt, um, DC spindle and then click save and there we have it so um so to come up here to the green here and it sh this should be green now should be connected and you should be able to move this around so make sure that it's on 0.01 or 0.1 and let's just move down a couple times let's move over to the right make sure you move to the right first because you're sitting on your limit switches and then we'll move to the left perfect so we're good okay now now that we've got it all connected i'm going to remove this just to be cautious i'm going to clip it on here and uh so that is setting up our machine that is getting everything ready if you did not have your uh, z probe connected and configured that's all you got to do delete the machine get it configured and we'll go from there so Let's go ahead and get started. So what I want to do is, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to move my bed back up so that I can access it and clamp on the board. What I have here, the, um, let me move this out of the way. The fence that I'm making, I did this already before and I have cheat notes, so you'll see me go by them here. Um, it's 13 inches long. The material I have on here, I'm not going to put obviously the entire length, but it is two foot by six 
So I'm not gonna, I don't really need to put all that, but I'm gonna go ahead and let's change our material up here. We are going to put the width is six inches and the height is, it is 24, but well, that's fine. We could leave it 24, it doesn't really matter. Um, tile one, tile two, unfortunately I don't have the pro version, so I can't do tiling. Um, it is a half inch thick. Let me just confirm that. Pretty sure it is. Yeah, it's a half inch thick. And that's it. So we'll click away from that. And now if you look over here, you've got your material. And it knows, see it stopped at the 14 here because it knows that that's only the size of my bed. And that's perfectly fine because I'm only going to come up 13 inches here anyway. So that's really not a big deal. So um, this is what we got. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clamp. Well, I guess I don't have to clamp it down right now. We can go ahead and do the, uh, the design of it first. Let's do that. All right, I'm going to move the camera out of the way so that you can just see the design I'm going to do. Now, you may find that how I'm doing mine is not the traditional. I've been doing this for lots of years, and uh, I just have my own methods to make things a little easier for myself. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in here and um, we, I took measurements. Let me just, let me just put you back here to the camera real quick. I took measurements from the first, where the first hole is going to be from the end of the bed here, from the very end of the bed. So if you notice here, that's where I'm going to put my board right on the end there. So I got measurements the first hole, second, third, fourth, and so forth, blah, blah, blah. And I got my little cheat notes here so I don't have to take your time doing it all over again. So what we're going to do is the first thing I want to do is create the actual piece of wood first. So let's create a square. And let's move this out of the way. That square I said is going to be... Now, let's see here. The height is going to be 13 inches, I said. And I actually forgot the width. The width is one inch. Actually, it is one and an eighth. So the width is going to be 1.125 and hit tab. <clears throat> so now we have the actual size of the piece of wood that we're going to be cutting. So it doesn't matter where we place it for right now. Um, so, but what we are going to do is go up to cut and we're going to choose um, cut outside shape path. And that is going to cut on the outside of it. So the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to make some holes. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this. Um, and by the way, the depth of this first cut, let's just put it at one eighth. That's fine right there. And, and I'll explain to you why we're going to do that later. Okay. Now that we have the frame set up, we have it at the uh, zero, zero position. We're going to click on it. We're going to choose the bottom left. That's what we want to have zero and it is at zero, zero. So now we're going to make some holes. Um, I have the uh, first hole is going to be 23 millimeters to the center from the bottom of the, uh, the piece. And then they're going to be 45 millimeter every one after that. So let's just start by creating a circle and we're going to lock it. We're going to size it, which is 8.2 millimeter and hit tab. That should make it the size. And we want to move it over here and um, center it in here. So like I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on it. We're going to click on the center position is what we're going to use. And the Y we want is 23 millimeter. That's how far up the first hole is going to be. The X um, is going to be a little different. So if we have it selected, we're going to then hold the shift and click on the um, outer frame. And then we're going to center it horizontally. It should have moved that circle, uh, our circle in to 14.3 to the center of its hole. So um, now that we have the very first hole, let's just double check that the outer frame did not move. We got, that's perfect. And the center of this one is perfect. So we're good to go here. Now let's go up to cut. 
and let's lower this all the way down to the bottom depth. This way, um, when you look at the board here, whoops, where am I at here? You actually see it's gonna be a hole inside of here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to replicate these um, instead of creating a new one and manually do it either way, however you choose to do it. I'm just gonna show you quickly how to replicate them. But um, like, again, I don't wanna put a hole at every spot because that's kind of overkill. So I'm actually gonna skip one. So the first one's 23 up and then it's 45 every after that. But if I'm gonna skip one, so then it'll be 90 every after, every one after that. So we're going to select the hole. We're going to come over to apps. We're gonna scroll down to replicator and we're gonna tell it we want just one column. We want four holes. And the spacing is gonna be 90 millimeters and we're gonna use the center. So it's gonna go off of the center of the first hole, 90 every one after that. And then we're gonna click import. And as you see, it now created the holes every one after that. So if you wanna just double check, this should still be 23, 14.3. This should now be 14.3 and then 90 plus 20.3 or 20, yeah, 23, and uh, which is um, 113. So that one was good, and so and so forth, all the way up here. So those are our holes, and as you can see over here, we now have them. Oh, I know. We now have them. You know, going through the wood. So now we're going to make the inset for the uh, the washers. We're going to do a little recessed holes for the washers and a little cutouts. So first thing, again, let's create another circle, move it over here out of the way so we can work with it. Um, make sure it's locked. The size of this hole is 16.5, which is about a quarter inch. It's the size of the washer, so it fits in there. It's actually just a little bigger, I believe, um, so that it fits inside the hole just right. And we only want it to go 2.5 millimeter deep. So if we click on cut, we're gonna change the depth of it to 2.5 millimeter, hit tab. So as you can see over here now, it's just, just enough to go in uh, for, for the washer to be sitting in it. So there's a couple ways we could do this. Um, the easiest probably would be to um, drag this over and it is gonna be the exact same center as each one of these holes. So if you wanna click this one, and then I don't believe easel will move the second, I don't know if it moves the second one over or if it moves them all. So I'm gonna hold the shift and click this. And I see it moves both and I don't want that. So edit, undo a line. So the easiest thing would be to do to take this center, 14.3 to 23 and do the same thing here. We're gonna go 14.3 to 23 and it put it right on it. So now that it's right on it, what it needs to do is you need to, Make sure it's highlighted, go up to edit, and then choose send to back. And I'll show you why, whoops. If I undo that, what happens is it sits on top and we don't want that. We want the other piece on top so it cuts all the way through. So um, you're gonna click on it and then choose edit, send to back, and then you will now see the hole there. Now, I guess the easiest way to do is we could just simply do the same thing again is, um, do the replicator, I mean, why not, right? So let's click apps, make sure it's select. You have to select it first and click uh, replicator, one column, four of them, uh, 90 to the center and click import. And there they are. And now I put them all up the top again, which is fine. So now we're just gonna select this one, hold the shift key, we're gonna select them all, whoops. And we're gonna go to edit, send to back. Very simple, very simple. Now, as you can see, we have the board there and the place for the washers. So one thing that um, I had an issue with in the past is, you know, it not cutting all the way through the board. So if your Z probe is not perfect or if for whatever reason, um, you know, it, it um, it's just not set right, it, it happens. Um, one of the features in the Pro, if you click this circle here, um, click Cut, one of the features in the Pro is Add Depth. And the purpose for that is if you do 0.5 millimeter, which is what I would do, 
that adds it a little bit through, um, just in case you're off a little bit by 0.5 millimeter. So unfortunately, because it, um, I don't have the pro, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change my material. I'm gonna tell, my, tell Easel that my material is not 12.7. I'm gonna add five millimeter to that. And I'm gonna say it is 17.7. No, 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 I'm sorry, 0. 0.5, I'm sorry, my bad, whoops. 0. 0.5, my bad, my bad. So we're gonna add it is going to be 13.2. I think I said that right. Yeah, is that right? Yes, so it's gonna be 13.2. And so now in my material, uh, it thinks I have 13.2. And so then I'm gonna come back to these. I'm gonna cut and make sure the depth is at 13.2 because we went over to the bottom. So we're gonna make sure it's gonna go a little further, which is fine because I'm going to have another board underneath of mine, but I just wanna double check that they're all good. 13.2 and 13.2. Yep, we're good, okay. So now that I have that, let's see, we've got the holes there. So one of the things that um, I need to do is I wanna drill a hole. I wanna flip this over so that I could put those T-nuts on the bottom and so that I'll have uh, a set of threads through the holes to put my clamps on if I wanna put a clamp on the fence. So how I do that is, is I create a pilot hole where I want it. And then when I'm done cutting, I take it off and I flip it over and that's where it's at. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a pilot hole. I'm gonna click the drill right here. Now it is going to be 45 millimeter from the center of this first hole. So it's really simple. If you want to do the math, we can simply pull up the calculator, do it that way, which would be uh, easiest way to do it. The first center of this hole is um, the Y, which is 23 millimeter. So, I mean, if you want right now, we could put, click on this and choose 14.3. Okay. Now we want the Y distance and the Y distance I said was 23. So we're going to go 23 plus 45 is 68. So we're gonna click back over here. We're gonna click on this and we're gonna change the Y to 68. So theoretically, that is the dead center of the next spot up. And that is a drill hole. And we're gonna to go to cut and we obviously we want it to go all the way through. And that's the first spot. Now, again, we can simply do the replicator or we could do just what we just did. But I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do the replicator. I'm gonna do one, two more. So I need three, you have to include this one. So I'm gonna click here. Uh, sorry, you have to make sure it's selected. We're gonna make sure it's selected. Then you go to apps, replicator, one row, I'm sorry, one column. What did I say, three? One, two, three, and the spacing was 90, just like all the other ones, because we're gonna skip the 45 spot. We're using the center, I'm gonna click import. And as you can see, it put them in there now. Ta-da. So now when you look over we, here, we have pilot holes. Now when we flip this board upside down, we're gonna have those pilot holes to guide us exactly where we want, and we're gonna put little recess things on the bottom of the board. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna leave this fence here and I'm gonna do its depth of um, uh, about a quarter, um, let's just say three millimeter, it's not much. I just wanted to do a marking on it so that I know where it's at, um, so I know everything's lined up before I waste my time taking the board off and realizing that it didn't line up to what it was supposed to be. Now, one of the things that I um, am very picky on is cutting the fence last. I always cut the outside last. So I'm just really, really, uh, it's just a thing that you should do because when you put tabs in there, it may or may not line up. Um, I mean, it may or may not be weak. So you always wanna cut it last. So what I do is, is I'm gonna uh, make sure this is, everything's good here. And I'm gonna click on the fence. I'm gonna go edit copy of the frame rather, and I'm gonna create a new work piece, which I call layer. And then I'm gonna click edit and paste. And it's gonna put it exactly the same place. If you click over here, you're gonna see it's at zero, exactly the same place as the other one. 
and we're going to go to cut and we're going to pull it and cut it all the way through. You notice the wood size is still 13.2, so we're going to make sure we cut it all out. And then what we're going to do is click away from it a minute. I want to zoom in because we need to get it in the picture here. Let's move it over here a little bit. And now we're going to click on it and we're going to edit the tabs. So let's come over to cut and we're going to come down to the tabs. Um, I don't, uh, hold on, let me do back to inches for a second. The tabs are, I like 25 by 25, quarter inch by quarter inch, 0.25. Whoops. Um, oh, shoot, hold on. I think that's just a good happy medium. What the tab is, is how tall the tab's going to be. The board is a half inch, so it's going to be half of the height of the board. And the same thing with the width. Um, the height, you could go a little lower, like 0.20 if you wanted to. Depends how aggressive you're going to be with your machine. If you're, um, if you're not going to be really aggressive, then you can um, leave it as it is. I personally have had tabs break loose, and it's not very cool. So if you're looking over at your piece here, I have a quarter inch, quarter inch. You see the yellow markings here. Let me, let me uh, of course it's going to be right in the way. Let me zoom in. And we click on it. And as you see your markings here, you can actually drag those tabs. What you don't want is a tab up on these little ends here because you can't cut them off. You can, but it's a pain in the butt. You want to stay down a little bit. And I like staggering them just so it gives it more stability because um, you don't want the piece to break through. And if you're going to run aggressive and if it's really long, then you just add another tab in. No big deal. You just click cut and change the number of tabs to five. And as you can see, add one in. I'm going to go back to four. And um, let me show you, if you add one in, see where it put it on that corner? You do not want to, you just want to, oops. You want to drag that yellow and move it out of there. But I'm going to actually um, put it back to four. So that's how the tabs work. That's what they're for. Um, now I have two on one side, which I do not want. Um, see if I can drag that over right to there. That's pretty good. Not a big span distance here. Should be good right there, no problems. Um, and then there's that. So there's my tabs. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna run this one first. It's gonna do the cut throughs, the drilling. It's gonna just put a score on here where I can actually see where it's gonna be. It's gonna cut the top part out and then I will do the complete cutout and then we'll flip it over and um, change, or then we'll flip it over and do the bottom part. So um, now that I have those done, I'm going to simply do the bottom holes real quick on a, another layer, which can be called a workpiece, or it's a workpiece, but I call a layer. So I'm going to open this one up, and I'm going to create, create another hole. And what this is going to be, when I flip the board over, I'm going to put the, the, uh, um, the CNC bit right down inside that pilot hole, and then we're going to make that hole bigger, and then we're going to make a spot for the bottom T to the, the bottom T nut. So the bottom hole, let's go over here to shape, and we'll go back to millimeters. The bottom hole is 10 millimeter diameter. Oh, I forgot to lock it. Hit it. Oh, that doesn't matter. 10 and then 10. And I should have locked it. Click away. I'm going to zoom in and let's do this again. So it's 10 by 10. And this is going to be a hole. We want to cut it all the way through. And we want to click on the center of this hole. And we want to zero it out. We're going to hit zero and zero. So it's going to be, if you look down here, dead on the corner of my workpiece right here. And if you look on the piece here, as you can see, it's dead on the corner. So th the reason why you do that is because I don't want the bit to move X and Y anywhere. When I put that bit down inside the hole, I want it to just simply start creating the, the bigger diameter hole. I do not want it to move anywhere else except up and down. And you know, the, the Z axis, that's it. So that's how you do that is you put it at a zero and um, it won't go anywhere. So that's the size of that hole. And now we have the outer part of the, uh, the T slot or the T nut, and it is 19 millimeter. And same thing, 2.5 deep. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to create another hole or another circle. And we're going to tell it, or we're going to lock it this time. We're going to tell it it's 16. 
I'm sorry, 19. It's 19. I said 16. It's 19 diameter and it's 2.5 deep. We're going to hit cut. This one's only going to be 2.5 and tab. Now, same thing. We're going to zero this. We're going to move its distance. We're going to click shape. We're going to make sure it's in the center. We're going to do zero, tab, zero, tab. And it's there. And as you see, it's on top. And we want it send back to the bottom. So now it's going to cut through. And we're going to go here. Now, this just reminded me of something. Um, I'm going to come back to the first one here. And I'm going to click on this here. I don't want it to go to 2.5. I want it to go 1.75. I I, or 1.8 is fine. I think I remember that that it was, it was a little too deep. I'm going to change these to 1.8 because the washer is really is, is pretty thin. And if I remember correctly, it was a little bit deep. So really simple. Just come and change a cut 1.8. Okay. Now back to the other part here. So when we flip it over, we're going to simply just run this carbon. It's going to do all of this goodies and that's it. All right. So let's go ahead and, uh, get connected, um, get everything on there. I'm going to make this bigger for you here so that you can just see briefly what I'm doing. <clears throat> Very simple, I'm just gonna clamp this on the board here. Piece of cake. Clamp yours however you uh, see fit with whatever board you're using. I have half inch MDF. with my um, custom uh, clamps here. So one thing I am gonna do though, before I get too far clamping here, I'm gonna make sure my distance is correct. I'm actually, I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm actually gonna move the board all the way up. It's a waste if I don't. Come down a little bit there. That one. Come on. That one, and I am way up here. So I'm going to measure here. I've got, oh, exactly three. Not three. Three and three. And this is why a fence is good because I wouldn't have had to measure that. But anyway. Put another clamp up here. Move this baby down. Okay. Should have tight. You've got your Z Pro. You're ready to go. All right. I'm going to do this the best way I can for you so you can see and watch everything I'm doing. I'm going to move this over here. Um, I'm going to shrink it down and then when it starts cutting, I'll go ahead and move. Uh, I'll go ahead and switch to the full camera so you can see. And then. Uh, you know, depending on how long it takes, I may fast forward it or whatever. But. So let me move this stuff out of the way and make sure my laptop's not in the way. Everything's good. You've got your uh, one eighth um, bit and uh, in the uh, in your spindle. And so now what we're going to do is let's go up to the um, whoops. Let's go up to the cut settings. Now remember, your cut settings are different for each one. So I'm going to click on the first workpiece and I'm going to click manual. Um, I'm used to the uh, not metric here. Um, 30 inches a minute is good. 9.28 is a little bit um, shallow for me. I'm going to put 0 0.075. I really want to run it at 0 0.1. But, um, and then I'm going to run this at 40. So one thing is, is when you first start it, uh, remember that you can speed it up and slow it down. So if you find that it's running too hard, um, too deep, too fast or whatever, you can actually slow it down. And if it's way off, then just stop it and restart it all over again. 
So we have 49 and 0 0.075. So if we're going to click on this um, layer, I'm going to cut, cut settings, manual, 40, whoops, 49. 0.75. Same thing with this one. 49. Okay. So we've got them set. We've got our bit. Uh, we've got our board. We've got the eighth inch. We got the eighth inch bit. Um, you got your Z probe out. Everything's good. Now we're going to um, let's go ahead and home the machine. We're going to Go up to machine and home the machine. At least get our starting point here. Okay, now that we've got it home, let's go ahead and start do a carve. So we're going to click on carve. Um, all right, so I. Uh, Almost did a big boo-boo. Um, I mounted this board on there and I forgot to put a piece underneath of it because remember the bit's going to go through and I don't want it to tear up my aluminum bed. So I had to backtrack for a second here. And, um, you know, these are always things that you always have to pay attention to. Of course, I get all flustered because I'm trying to do a video and remember everything and all that good stuff and it just doesn't work very well. So... Um, I have a scrap piece of board underneath. You can use anything, thin, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, I just happen to have this piece here. So now I'm going to redo this again, mount it down, and then we will go ahead and start the uh, cut process. Okay, now that I got that all done, we're secure. Now I'm going to go ahead and home the machine. Bring it over here where it's supposed to be. I normally don't have a piece this thick underneath of it, but I uh, used up all my scraps, so unfortunately, that's what I got. And I should have put the board up to here, but I don't care. We're just going to do it. All right. So now we've got it at the home position. I'm going to actually move it over to where approximately where I'm going to want it to start. So I'm going to jog this over. Move my bit down a little bit so I can see where it's going to be. I'm going to move up just a tad. Make sure that I'm not in the way of my clamp. I'm good. That's actually a pretty good position right there. Um, again, you should, I could have should have moved this up to make to uh, so it's not uh, wasting the board. But anyway, uh, let's see here. We've got our cut settings. We've got the machine about where we want it. Now we're going to raise the Z axis up a little bit because we're going to need to use the Z probe, and the Z probe is going to need to fit under there. So um, just going to raise it up a little bit so there's enough room. I might, I might go up one more. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the cut. Once I start to cut, I'm going to um, zoom the camera in, make it bigger, and then we'll go from there. So let's click Carve, uh, confirm material thickness, material secure. We're using an eighth inch straight bit. We do have a probe, and the machine is in position where it needs to be. And now we're going to clip the clip, now you have your eighth inch uh, end mill should be installed in there. If you don't, go ahead and install that. Um, whoops. And then we're going to put the Z probe underneath. You don't want it too far up because if you do, it'll air out before it gets to it because it'll be too far of a travel. But um, we're going to tell it clip is attached. And then we're going to touch the bottom, make sure that it does recognize it. 
touch plate in place, and then start probing. Okay, now it determined the uh, height of the board because it knows the thickness. Remember we put 20.3 millimeter, I believe it was in this. It knows the thickness, so now just added that or minus that and that's how it knows. All right, so Z probe is put away. We're gonna set X and Y zero. So now we're gonna turn the spindle on and then get to going. And card. It's going to do the holes first. Now this is just going to cut out the fence frame for us, just to let us know roughly where uh, where everything's going to line up. If this little small outline is not right, that's pretty good. That's at forty point zero uh, seven five, and uh, that's pretty good. Now we got the cut. Just want to clean up a little bit. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to do anything. So we got the cut. Everything looks good. Next time I probably won't go as deep on the score. And I just wanted to make sure that it outlined really well. Everything's good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just switch over to the, to the, uh, dirty to the next layer here can't see it whoops trying to get everything out of the way here we're going to switch over to the next layer and this one's going to do the actual cutout so we're going to do the same thing again i'm going to uh, use the last known position and which should work fine um, i've been having pretty good luck with that so far we've got the tabs on this one this one's going to simply do the cutout it did cut pretty good with that same speed and everything, so I'm going to leave it that. I'm going to leave it at that and let it do its thing. Uh, let's double check. 49.075. All right, so click carve. Confirm thickness. Material. Confirm. Um, I'm going to choose manual this time and use last position. That would be work zero for the last time that we did it. So I didn't touch anything here, didn't move anything, left everything it is. We're going to, the second time I chose manual and we're going to choose use last position. So it's going to assume that everywhere it's going to be now was where it was before, which is what we want. So turn spindle on and we're going to go. Fire. Yeah. So since we already did a cut, there, it's just going to go through the motions, and like I said, next time I probably won't go as deep. I just wanted a little bit, just an outline, probably just maybe like two millimeter, maybe three tops, something, I don't know, two, three, I think is quarter inch, which is that, or eighth inch. So that's perfect. As you can see, it's still perfectly lined up. We chose last new position, and we're good to go. So if you'll notice, it's actually starting to lift up for the tabs now. So you're going to notice it stop, and it's going to lift up right there. Now go back down. 
So now it's making places for the tabs so that it will uh, stay connected, doesn't flop around once it um, once it cuts all the way through. There's another one there. <laughs> What I'm going to do now is go ahead and jog this out. Let me back up the camera a little bit. A bit much. Okay. I guess it really doesn't matter, does it, if I do it here or there? Actually, you know what? All I'm going to do is jog this up out of the way. I'm just going to leave it so you can see what I'm doing over here. Um, raise my bit, make sure it's okay. Change the X and Y to 1. I'm actually going to change it to 2. And move it on up. Okay. More. Back this up here for you. All right, so basically, I've got it all done. Everything looks good. I can see my tabs. Uh, before I move this material, I'm going to make sure that it does look like it went through and cut everything I need. So now I can go ahead and take this off. Now, remember, when you take it off, it's going to be dirty. So um, be prepared for that. I'm going to get my vacuum. Clean it up. Oh, hold on. Battery dying. Okay. That's better. Clean this up. Back in here from the back side. Seems good. Back. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clean this all up. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, let me just position my camera and I'll come right back to this to show you what I'm going to do here. So, the first thing I'm going to do before I even take this off of here is I'm going to hit it with the orbital sander to smooth all this out. Top. And the bottom. That's it. Don't need much. And then I'm going to, you can see, you've got, you've got a tab here, 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 and here. And you're going to want to cut the tab closest to your material, not the scrap. Because you're going to have to sand those little pieces off so that's nice and flat. So the easiest way to do it really is just lay it down flat on a board and just get to cutting. Now, I normally use like a jigsaw, but these are pretty small. I just use a little insole. And I'm going Okay, so that. And now, as you can see, my edges, little imperfections there. And I'm going to do the same thing. Hit them with the sander. Put them nice and flat. It's a purdy. So there's that. 
All right, so now the next piece we're going to do is we just got to simply turn this over. Oh, looks like we didn't go through on those two holes. So the next thing we're going to do is turn this over and go through the pilot holes. Now, if they don't go through for whatever reason, I could have sworn I moved those down. Maybe I didn't. Um, maybe just get a drill bit. I'm sorry. Maybe just get a drill bit and put them through, which is what I'm going to do real quick. And that's exactly why I like to uh, set the material a little thicker because, you know, they don't let us go through. Maybe this end of the bed, maybe I had to clamp tighter or I don't know, whatever it is. But anyway, um, it's probably so paper thin. Yeah, I didn't even turn the drill on and it came right through. So, yeah, I don't even need. That's how close it was. So, yeah, I didn't even need to turn the drill on. So, anyway, there's that. I'm going to clean it up. So, yeah, I mean, it could have just been a piece of, I mean, thickness of the wood or whatever. All right, so now, very, very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the board upside down. And I'm not going to use this thick because this is just too thick. Hold on. I'm just going to use something like this. This is really thin. And remember, I need to clamp to be able to reach up over something. So it needs to be a little thin if it can. And it doesn't really need, this is actually perfect. This looks like quarter inch here. So So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this bit and we're going to put it right inside this hole, this hole and this hole. So I guess just make sure the clamps are not close to those holes. Once we put it inside that hole, it's going to, we're going to tell it to go and um, it's going to circle and just make that hole bigger. It's not going to move X and Y anywhere. So coming back to the software, uh, let's get you so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to switch over to this one, or this one, and then, um, I'm sorry, I switched the wrong one, this one. Remember, it is at zero, zero. I'm going to put it right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jog the machine, and I'm going to start with the first hole right here. So I'm going to go ahead and move the machine up, wrong way. Uh, that's okay. Move this over. Move down. Let me zoom you in a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. Whoops. All right, hold, hold on, let me fix this. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get this bit right inside this hole. So I'm going to change my step down smaller. Too far too far. So now I'm going to step it down smaller and come back up and it is perfect on the Y and I think it's actually pretty perfect on the X. So I'm going to lower it down. Now I'm going to lower my step down and it goes right inside that hole. It's perfect. So now that it's inside the hole, I know it's right where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and raise this up. And we are going to have to do the paper method. I mean, we could do the Z probe, to be honest with you. Actually, let's, let's do the Z probe. Why not, right? Let's do it. All right. So we're going to raise this up out of the way so we can fit the Z probe under it. And then now we're going to go to carve.
I'm going to move the camera out of the way again. Such a pain. Carve. We're going to say material thickness is that. That's fine. Secure, eighth inch. And this time we're going to use the probe again because we have a whole new thing we're doing now. And we're going to confirm our position is right where we want it. We're going to connect up the probe. Oh, it's too, a little too much here. It was too close, so I don't want it to be that close to it. Um, but it has to be right on it or right above it. So, yeah, we're good. And I'm going to say clip is attached. We're going to test it by touching it. It notices it. And now we're going to say touch play, start probing. Okay. Now we now it knows our Z height. We're good there. Oops. Move this here. And then we're going to say Z probe is away. Now we're going to say set X and Y zero because, um, let me move this up here, because we're going to, this is our new X and Y zero, not where it was all the way over here before. So we're going to now do set X and Y, and we just did our probe. So that's the Z's already at zero or where it needs to be. And then theoretically, this should now just go right down to that hole and should start just cutting. It should cut all the way through and then cut the top and then be done. Here we go. Hello. Okay, perfect. So as you can see, it stayed right where we needed it, did exactly what I wanted it to do, and it's actually pretty perfect. My only concern is this, it might be a little bit deeper than what I wanted, but um, that's okay. We will figure that out. So now all we got to do is just move it up to the next hole. So I'm going to simply do the exact same thing. You're more than welcome to watch that. I'm going to just simply, it's already raised up. Now, we should not need to do the probe again. We should just be able to do the, lead the manual because, no, that's not true because we're moving it. So let's click, click X. Or I'm going to click the X. I'm mean, sorry, the Y. It's pretty close. So I'm going to slow that down. Right there. And it is a little bit to the right. Uh, let me come lower this down. I'm sorry, lower that down. I'm going to go just that little bit. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to lower the Z axis. I'm going to slow it down so that I don't jam into the wrong place. So that's pretty good. Yep. Okay. All right, so now let's just go ahead and do the cut again. If you want to watch it, it's really simple. Hit carve, confirming the thickness, the, the bit. I am going to do the probe again because um, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to remember where it's at because we moved it and we want the new position. So it doesn't hurt to do it again. We'll just clip it, piece of cake. We're going to do the probe. Confirm, clip is attached, touch it, works good, touch plate, probe. Takes a minute, doesn't hurt. All right, Z probe is away. And there. All right, so we are now going to set the X, Y to zero because um, we have moved it up a little bit to the new spot. So we're going to set X and Y to zero and spin the on and go.
clean this one up. And let's move to the next one. Same exact thing. All right, I'm going to move this. Uh, actually, I don't have to move it much at all. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to raise the bit up. And then I'm going to move it that way. And I went too far and hit the limit switch. That's okay. It's out of the way. So we're going to take this off. Let me back this camera up for you. Again. Okay. We're going to take this off. We're going to vacuum it down. Piece. Okay, now that we've got the piece done cut, what we're going to do is, the first thing is, we're going to make sure that the washers line up perfect. Perfect, perfect, really good. I like it. And then these are going to be upside down. This is in the bottom piece here, and we're going to put these in the slot, and I'm going to use a hammer to tack these on. I'm not going to do it on my table because my machine's on here. So I've got three of these T nuts with the uh, things on. I'm going to tack them on real quick and then come back and show you. Do them on the floor, probably a little better. One more. So there we go. We've got them all. We've got them hammered in, as you can see, nice and pretty. So now when we put this on here, you've got a place to put your brackets or your uh, clamps if you so choose. Um, they will actually screw into these now. These are the, M, uh, the M6 style um, Threads. This way, it matches what the what came with the machine. If you want to put your uh, your clamps on there, so what we're going to do now is just simply mount it to the board, and then we'll be done. So we've got a washer, a washer, and then we're going to put. I have uh, M6 by 25 millimeter. I believe it's 25 millimeter, 26 millimeter. Um, screws to go in and then put these here. Now these are these are actually called they're T-slot nuts, but these are called square hammerhead T-slot nuts. They're a little bit different and they actually go perfectly in the rail. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. They go perfectly inside these larger rails here. So I'm just gonna get one of these screws for each one of these. Put them on. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And then that one. And screw. Pretty simple. And then now, each one of these screws, or uh, uh, T-slot uh, nuts, go fit right inside. One there, there. Whoops, wrong end. Remember the end, this one here goes on there first. This is the one that's on the uh, shorter end here, so. 
All right, do this again in here, here, and here. And here. Very simple. I like them because they don't spin inside there. So there's the fence, and you're just going to tighten these down quick and easy. Very simple project if you want to get a little practice on uh, doing this. That's it. Now, this is solid. Any new material you put up there, you uh, just mount right against your fence. And, uh, you know, your wire can always be straight. So if you have longer material, um, you have one, two, three pieces of, uh, there are also M6. So you could put your regular clamps in there. So if you have a bigger piece of wood, or whatever, um, you can clamp it onto the wood. You could turn a, uh, just a piece of wood upside down, just enough to hold it. It's not gonna go up, it's not gonna go this way for sure. So there's that, um, and there you have it. Easy enough, very simple, very, very simple project. Kind of got the end of the stadium, how to do the holes, um, the recessed little holes for the washers up underneath, how to turn it over, so there you go. I hope that uh, gets you started, do a little bit of test cuts, and. Um, Go from there. Hi hey guys. Well, hopefully you made it this far. And, um, you know, I just want to say a couple words, you know, uh, projects like these are, they're pretty simple projects. Um, and, you know, not everything on the CNC goes as smooth as you would like. Um, what you saw was me doing a simple uh, fence here for the mandrel, but what you didn't see was the hours that it took me and the outtakes and the stop and go and stop and go. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into these things and there's a lot that goes into the machines. I, I couldn't get the, the Z probe to work correctly. I had to uninstall my drivers, reinstall them, and then just back and forth. And, um, I even wrote in the, uh, easel support group and, um, finally I got it working right. And so, you know, you just need to understand that, that, you know, the machines aren't perfect. I'm not perfect. Everybody's not perfect. And, um, you know, you just have to stick with it. You know, don't give up. There's, you know, different cuts that are going to be made that aren't supposed to be made or whatever. And, you know, just stick with it. You know, keep at it. Um, the more you mess up, the more you learn. And that's how I've learned a lot. I first started, I was breaking bits off and, you know, I'm, I'm, tearing stuff up. I'm drilling into my bed. I mean, even this one here, I drilled into my bed on this chute. And, um, you know, I actually did it the other day. I did one that I wound up having to trash the entire thing. And, you know, it's just, uh, there's a lot goes into it. And I'm just, what I want you to know is to not give up, keep going. And, um, you know, when something doesn't work right, just learn from it and do a bunch of uh, sample cuts, do a bunch of test cuts, um, just like this here, the learning, simple holes, understanding that sometimes they don't go all the way through. There's just different things that you'll learn from that and take notes. So keep at it and don't give up and you will eventually hopefully get to where you need to be and start making some incredible new stuff with your machine. So that's it and uh, have a good day. Jungle.